Redditors who rage quit a job without thinking, what was the last straw? Head bartender at a upscale place. A regular books a happy hour after work social for 30 with me. Day comes and I get to the bar area all set up and ready. New fucking manager says I can't handle it myself and puts the head server in the bar with me. Cool, we both can work it. I figure I'll make around 90 to 120 drinks and she can handle the food, run drinks and so on. We should make good money. Manager and head server decide that she will handle it and tip me out the normal server tip out to the bar. She tells me this is what's happening. I tell he I booked it and I am happy to split it but no way I'm just taking a tip out. Difference would be $150 down to probably $60. So fuck that. I go back to the office where this fucker says that's it's happening his way and I better get with the program. Asked if I understand and I said I do. The party is starting to show up. I grab the entire bar kit which is mine and dip out the side. I like to think I fucked them hard, but in reality I'm sure they got through it fine. Still felt good though. I was about 22. Working at a call center for Sprint. There was a three week training class before you got out into the workspace. I was in the last week of training and I needed the afternoon off to go to a funeral. I was miles ahead of where people needed to be at that point, it was training for idiots who didn't know what a cell phone was. I got told I couldn't have the afternoon off, but if I did go I would have to restart my training on Monday and do it all over again. I walked right out told them to mail me my last check. You could have gotten three more weeks of training without having to deal with customers and been paid for it. I could have. But I was basically done with that place before that happened. We weren't allowed sharp things. So no knife with your lunch. So much BS like that. I got a job at a hardware store making one dollar less. Was happier. I worked as one of those super annoying face-to-face -face fundraiser people. You know, those who will stand in your way and use every trick in the book to shame you into sending them money every month so they can continue their scam. Well, I did a one-day training, was sent out in the morning and quit after two hours. People hate you, for good reason, and treat you accordingly. I found out soon after how the money is really spent for the most part and have been super against this specific type of fundraiser, especially since they ruin the face of actual fundraising. So now I just ignore them as good as possible and warn my friends not to work for them. I talked to a guy, not sure if he was a low life schemer or a smart fellow, who took a job like that, went out like you did, came to the same realization, and took off with the cash and paperwork after about 2 hours. He got $20 total, figured it was fair enough, and never went back for a paycheck. It's the reverse scenario, but that reminds me of the old saying Reddit loves, if you lend someone $20 and never see them again, it was $20 well spent. Worked an overnight job. During the holiday season me and the other overnight guys took all the overtime we could get, working 18 to 20 hour days, working after having 4 hours off, whatever. All legal in the state I'm in, and it's not critical or cerebral work so no harm, we're basically just lumps of flesh in a uniform. That was fine for a few months, I bought a bunch of extra crap with it. But I got burned out after about 4 or 5 months straight of it and just started turning it down. Then the manager started making it mandatory. I told him no, we drive on our regular job so pushing it when we can't do it isn't a good idea. Appealed to his manager and the mandatory overtime went away for a while. Suddenly one day I come into the other overnight guys being moved elsewhere and I have to pick up their slack. Why? That shift needs to be covered, so I'll cover their shift and mine. Which will force me to work 4 to 5 hours over to just cover the shift and the work required on said shift. I texted the manager immediately and told them I can't do it. He stated it's mandatory and if I cannot do it, I'll no longer have the job. He'd do me a favor this one time and move the other overnight guys back so I don't have to stay over. They were legitimately shocked when I didn't show up the next night, or ever again. I was 18 and working at a movie theater concession stand on an extra busy day. 
My co-workers made themselves busy doing things that didn't need to be done like checking toilet paper or organizing candy instead of helping me with a line that wrapped itself around the stand. One lady got extremely nasty with me because I didn't butter the middle of her popcorn, she was literally screaming at me for it. I looked and saw one of my co-workers just watching me and laughing as they pretended to clean the ticket booth window. I logged out of the POS, walked out of the concession stand, slammed the door behind me, told the customer she was being a complete bitch and didn't need more butter, told my co-worker to go F himself and walked out. I never went back despite them willing to apparently forgive me because this wasn't my usual behavior. Working at a theater is only fun if you're an usher, since you can fuck off with the other ushers all night. Concession is a nightmare. I worked at a theater and the manager made all of the girls concessionists and all of the boys ushers. Three of my guy friends worked there with me, and they went home hours before I did each night, because we had to wait until after the last showing to start cleaning up. I asked the manager if I could be an usher instead and he said no. Inbound call center. My sales stats went up because I reversed the order of two upsell paragraphs. Boss told me to just read the script. I handed in my notice. Not really a rage quit, but definitely a spontaneous one. I don't understand boss's logic, we're selling more but follow the script. Confused Lisa Simpson. Hearing they laid off the one other person who could handle any of the work in our area, then expecting me to pick up her workload as well as my own. She wasn't even supposed to be laid off, but the department director was eliminating a potential threat to her position. C people fire A and B people, so, I had enough. I begged them to get someone to help with the workload and when she turns out to be a top quality hire, she gets sacked. I quit within a few days, and 10 minutes after I told my boss, who realized she'd fucked up in a big way, the CIO has me in his office offering me a blank check, what would it take to get you to stay? Literally an admission they knew they'd been underpaying me by a significant amount for a critical role in the organization, top of all the rest of it. Possibly the worst thing he could have done in that moment. Last I heard, a year after that, they'd hired three people to try to keep up with the work backlog, were still falling behind, and sometime after that the company went under, I think. Good riddance. So this happened two weeks ago, I was going out with some friends and I tore my ACL. Told my boss I couldn't come in for a while because of this, I'm a chef so there's no way I can work with a torn ACL, however my boss failed to understand that and said that if I didn't come in the next day I would be let go, I quit on the spot. I feel like it's illegal to fire someone for an injury. Yes and no. For the US, if it happened on the job, definitely yes illegal. If you apply for and are granted FMLA you can get a certain amount of time off to recover but that amount is determined by the severity of the injury. If you neglect to apply for FMLA all bets are off. I've posted this before, but here you go, copied and edited for your enjoyment, I had a job in a salad plant, those bags of salad mix a lot of restaurants use, I was there for two weeks scoring lettuce, in front of a conveyor belt, 8 hours a day, pick up a head, slam it, pull the core, put it down, next. You talk to your co-workers or you plot the downfall of western civilization. One really sweet lady had been there for 10 years. 10 years on the lettuce line. She got called into the office and was gone for about half an hour. She said I won't be here tomorrow. I got promoted. I asked what she'd be doing. Cabbage. I wished her well, dropped my shit and walked out. I feel bad about not telling anyone I was quitting, but I was young and, well, 10 years. That was 29 years ago. Had I stayed I might be up to carrots by now. I sometimes wonder how my life might be different had I stayed, and in those moments I celebrate every decision I've ever made. That is by far the strangest rage quit. More of a despair quit, but it's my best quitting story. I worked in a kitchen at an Irish pub in small town Colorado. We had an Irish guy worked his way up from bartender to GM. Nasty, mean, drunk, loud dude. I mean this guy was either on one or tenth, no in between. 
So we're in the kitchen getting set up for lunch, and apparently it was really busy the day before and we had some late ticket times in the kitchen due to lack of preparation. Nothing horrible, just some things out of place. Irish boss walks in, alright. I want everything set up well. Nothing you have to go back into the walk-in for. I don't want to hear about anything not being ready on the line. So we're busting ass getting this line set up. Got all the bread, potatoes, meats and veggies and the like. Everything looks good, awesome. Lunch starts rolling in and I don't have barbecue sauce, fuck me. So I get over to the walk-in, grab some, go right back into the kitchen to finish this chicken sandwich, boss walks in. Where is that chicken sandwich? Me, I've got it right here, just had to grab some barbecue sauce. I said I want everything ready to go why the fuck is there no goddamn barbecue fucking sauce on the fucking line goddamn IT listen to what the fuck I told you god so I guess absolutely blowing up over barbecue sauce was the last straw for me. When I first moved to NYC I got a bartending job at a pub in Williamsburg. The manager was always MIA and the staff was usually left to their own devices. One weekend a huge blizzard hit the city. I had made it into work when the city declared a state of emergency and started shutting down the trains. I called my manager to tell them the trains were shutting down and the staff wanted to leave and catch the last trains home before it was too late. He said no and to stay. At this point the snow was getting deep enough to make opening the front door difficult. I texted my manager that we were leaving and we packed up and closed the store. The next morning the manager texted to say that we were opening for brunch despite all the trains being shut down. I told him I couldn't make it in so he said he would come pick me up in his car and asked for my address. I gave him a fake address, turned off my phone, went back to bed and found a new job later that week. You just know they're fucked financially if they're making you work. Did the bar shut down after that? Used to work for a large party supply store chain after college while trying to find full-time employment. It was Halloween time and all the kiddies and their parents flooded the store looking for costumes. We recently got a new manager who was moved to our store and for some reason didn't take a liking to me specifically. My job that day was to stand out near the wall of costumes, collect the number and size from the customers, then I'd relay it to the guys in the back via a headset. So you can imagine after a while we got overwhelmed because we were understaffed. As a result, I started going into the back myself and retrieving the costumes. The new manager proceeded to bitch me out loudly in front of the customers for breaking protocol. Having enough of her shit, I proceeded to tell her don't you fucking talk to me like that ever again. In front of said customers who were all stunned into silence. Took of my headset, to go on break and never came back. Was working as a short order cook at a pub and got slammed. Ran out of everything because day prep didn't. Asked the GM at the time to come online and back me up, to which she replied, I'm counting up my cash out. Deal with it. Let that sink in for about two minutes, then said, fuck this bullshit. Cook for your damn self, tossed my tongs backwards over my head and walked offline. GM, with whom I already had a rocky relationship, followed me back and asked, did you tell me to cook for myself? Incredulous and panicking, because we had three cooks, total, and I was the full timer, aside from KM started changing and chewed her out for being a shitty manager and told her any manager worth their salt would have stuffed their cash in their pockets, come behind the line and ask, what can I do to help? And NBSP, got a $2 per hour raise and a lot more respect after that. Only lasted another couple of months before I quit for a much better job in a much better restaurant. I was working at a restaurant that was, to put it bluntly, fucking atrocious. The place was almost always dead apart from the owner's friends who would make it their life's mission to be incredibly rude to myself and other staff members. Somehow I stuck it out for six months. The final straw came at Christmas when I wanted to travel back home to spend time with my family, as my grandmother was sick at the time, and their response was you have to decide what's more important, your job or your family. I told them that was the dumbest fucking question I've ever heard and walked out. What do they expect you to choose there? 
Yes, I'll gladly choose to stay at a place of work that would fire me the moment they could for someone cheaper over the people who have raised and taken care of me my whole life. Told three out of four managers, one wasn't there that day, that my grandma had died so I wouldn't make it to work the day after tomorrow. I also left a note for the fourth manager, and asked everyone to let him know. During the funeral I got a call from the fourth manager asking where I was. I called him back and explained and he said okay. Went to work the next day and they handed me a paper saying I'd been written up for doing an improper call out. I handed the paper back and just left. Thank you for my first silver anonymous stranger. I never thought this story would be the one to do it. YTF did you have four managers? I frequently have two and that still feels like too many. How much time would you say you spent each week dealing with these teeps reports? Inbound cold transfer sales job, you get utility customers from across the USA randomly transferred to get a confirmation hash but mostly to upsell for cable services. Hated it, would always get pressure to sign up caller for Dish Network even though no one ever wanted it. One day my supervisor, sits next to me listens to every call I'm doing questioning why I didn't sell a 80 year old woman AT&T U vs triple play when she said I don't own a computer and I just use an antenna. He freaks out and says you need to get your shit together now. I give him a blank stare continue to take calls for the rest of the day and ignore everything he's saying. He is storming around I get zero cells. I grabbed my phone charger and on lunch never come back. I'd you're in that business and actually want to make the sales, you're a piece of shit. You, are not a piece of shit, I used to work as a lifeguard. I had injured my shoulder and was in a sling, and they forced me to come into work and threatened to fire me if I didn't. I had to guard a pool being unable to swim because my arm was in a sling. Did the pettiest thing possible, sent in my resignation late at night, the day before my morning shift. Have fun finding a replacement, assholes. Why resign and not just let them fire you? You'd have potentially been better off, and possibly eligible for unemployment. I have no experience resigning or being fired and I'm 28. Some people just don't know this. My wife was about to give birth, and I took the job as a temp thing, was only there for three weeks, I'd just moved to the city. Worked there while I continued to look for an office job in engineering. The super I called to let know my wife was having contractions and her water broke told me to get to work and that the baby wouldn't be born till later anyways, I said no, I'm driving my wife to the hospital now, and he told me to get the fuck to work, I simply said I quit, and hung up on him. Ten days later I found a job, and have been employed here for four years now. I can't see any situation when somebody would react like that unless that person suddenly found themselves in a game show where the objective was to say the most offensive thing possible over the phone. No you can't help your wife give birth. Just get back to work. My husband's boss tried to get him to work the morning of our wedding. Your wedding is at 4, you can work a half day. On top of the obvious, husband is a mechanic, so he gets sweaty and covered with grime at work, it's not as if the boss was asking him to spend a few hours in an air-conditioned office. I worked at a small, family-owned restaurant for over a year. All I did was wash dishes. The owner hated me and always made my shift miserable because her creepy husband loved being around me and talking to me and she accused me of hooking up with him more than once. My last straw was her calling me a filthy whore in front of not just my co-workers, but also some customers. I was 15. Amy's Baking Company? Was working my second job as a welder booked two weeks holiday paid for a trip to Canada to see the now wife's family. The day before we are set to leave my manager tells me he's going to have to cancel it as he's booked three people off on the same weeks. I explained I'd paid out thousands on a holiday, he then said I booked mine last so I'd have to lose it. I spoke with everyone on site yet no one else had holiday booked. I went to our and he was called in to explain, he came out with the same crap our backed him up. I said okay got up and walked off site. 45 phone call missed by the time I'd driven home, one voicemail demanding I get my ass back in or I'm fired. I called the owner and explained I'd quit and my reason. 
turned my phone off and went in holiday. Aftermath. I returned from the holiday to nearly 50 voicemails from manager. Telling me I'm in deep shit act and should watch my back when in public. Sent them all to a solicitor and police in case anything happened, along with sending former boss everything. He was dismissed and I was offered his job as I'd been there longer than most of the team. Didn't accept as wanted to become self-employed and it was the push I needed. It's so fucking unreal that adults who act this way get hired to supervisory positions. Those types of people hunger for those types of positions. That's why you'll find them there so often. I worked at a movie theater in my hometown all through high school. When I moved for college, I was able to transfer to a theater owned by the same company in my college town. The management at the new theater was absolutely terrible. They were demeaning to the staff, they fired people for not selling rewards cards, and they scheduled mandatory all-hands meeting with less than one week's notice. At one such meeting, 7 a.m. on a Sunday, by the way, some of my co-workers were falling asleep. To wake them up, our managers made us stand up, do five jumping jacks, and sit back down. They did this every time someone fell asleep during the three-hour meeting. After around the fourth or fifth time, I decided I'd had enough, and didn't stand for our punishment. My manager singled me out, asking why I refused to participate. I replied, we're not children, don't treat us like we are, I was 20 at the time. My manager replied by suspending me for a month, right there, in front of everyone. I promptly replied I'll just fucking quit and never went back. No regrets. Edit, obligatory wow this blew up and thanks for the silver, stranger. Edit 2, I'm trying to reply to as many responses as I can. Also, thank you for the platinum. Now that made me feel good. Oh, it felt great. There were a couple things building up to the last straw, mainly I was the supervisor of my crew but the boss was getting around to the paperwork that would confirm my title change and pay raise for 3 months, also I was supposed to get full medical benefits but the day I quit the benefits were in the mail so just wait for 7 months. The last straw was when the company had approaching deadlines and the scumbag management staff was getting desperate, they kept cutting out everyone's breaks and harassing people out of filing first aid reports. Someone on my crew was starting to get heat trash, working in summer in the middle of a heat wave, but the boss was standing in the shade glaring us down so we wouldn't take breaks. After my co-worker collapsed I stopped everything and ran to her side to help. The boss came up and said oh shit heat stroke. Take 5 minutes, get water, get back to work so I exploded and told them to go fuck themselves and they're as bad as a manager as they are a person and they can't treat people like that. I helped my co-worker gather her things and I gathered mine and I drove her to the hospital and I never went back. I immediately filed a safety breach report with WorkSafe telling them of every safety rule they broke. And since then I heard that two others quit, the company is under investigation, and another co-worker asked me to support him in filing a discrimination lawsuit against the company, the same shitty boss was very racist towards natives. Greater than heat stroke? Take 5 minutes, get water, get back to work you can't fucking do that. People can die. WTF. Glad you don't work there anymore, God. At my very first pool job, I lasted about two and a half years, from 15 yo, to 17 yo. It was just one mess after another and in 2.5 years, we had gone through eight different bosses and had a massive turnover. By the time I was 17, I was in the top five most senior staff at the facility. Out of all the ridiculous things that happened, the last straw was when they made me go do a chemical run when the pool ran out of bleach. We had had a contamination and there was not a liter of bleach anywhere in the building at all. Nowhere. So my boss comes to me and tells me to take my car, not a company car, my personal car, and drive to the grocery store to buy some bleach, which wouldn't have done ST because it's not concentrated enough. They wouldn't have paid me back for gas or the time it took me to drive to the store. I went to my locker, grabbed all my stuff, packed it into my car and left. I didn't get the bleach, I just went home. I handed in my resignation later that day. 
contamination rhymes with poo, I think in that circumstance it rhymed with diarrhea. Worked in an independent cafe as the lone chef. Hours were good, free reign with the menu was great and the quality of produce that came in was second to none. Unfortunately the owner had misplaced aspirations towards being a chef and instead of hiring help, ran the kitchen himself on my day off. After repeated conversations about food safety and his apparent lack of care for customers' well-being, I came in after my day off to find a single breast of chicken cling filmed, siren wrapped, together with ready-to-eat ham, fucking expensive ham. I told him this wasn't safe and if he continued to violate food safety, I'd walk. He told me to serve the ham. Walk and a much-needed phone call to the authorities that I cannot recall right now. Working 12-hour days for weeks on end. The day before Christmas they came in and told us that even though the company gave everyone the day after Christmas off, my line still had to come in. I literally turned away from the meeting, grabbed my gear, and walked right out of the door. EDT, wow, this comment blew up. I never expected this many people to see this. I just want to say, that manual labor can be a bitch, but they are still good careers, I'm curious what type of job this was. Welding slash production. I got a job relocating large fully grown trees. The shop workers were talking this company up while I was doing my orientation saying this place was a feel good career. First week, we tore down an old house on our tree farm's land, all of the drywall, which is technically toxic because of how old it was, was supposed to be removed for a fee by the dump. They dug a ditch on a customer's house and buried in on their land when they weren't home. I then was asked to change crews, there were only two, and the one I moved to had a very high turnover rate. Todd was the boss of this crew, Todd was a fucking dick. He was a 35-ish year old man with a 18 year old girlfriend, he bragged about how he banged her at her family camping trip with her parents in the next tent about how he cheated on her, etc. He also loved calling everyone names. On my first day with him he called me a fucking loser because I had a RHCP sticker on my car. I had literally zero experience in that field, was hired as a laborer and was made to drive an excavator. Never used one before, got the hang of it pretty okay after a day or two. I was trying to get it in between two houses that were pretty close together, taking my time. He yelled at me to, hurry your dumb ass up I got out of the excavator, threw the key in the middle of the ditch and got in my car and left, I hope you told the customer that they buried drywall on their land. I never got the chance to, I quit very shortly after that. The customer wasn't at home whenever we were working on their land. I really should send them a letter or something though, it's going to kill anything that gets planted above it. My very first job was at a chain grocery store. I worked there for a little over two years as a cashier slash bagger and occasionally covered stock positions if somebody called in sick or anything like that. One day I came in and was told I was working in the frozen section that day. Okay, no worries. Goose, not his real name, was a good guy and I had no qualms with covering for him on a sick day. About an hour later I catch up with the front end manager, who I worked under every day for two plus years, and asked her what was up with Goose. I figured he was sick, but I didn't talk with him every day so perhaps he was on vacation. She told me no, Goose quit. Oh, I said, so I guess you've got me covering for a day or two until you find a replacement? No, she replied, that's just your job now. So here I was. A teenager just finishing high school and just wanting a little work experience and petty cash, moved without warning into a completely isolated position that someone literally quit because he was losing feeling in his fingers. I went back into the cooler, drank a chocolate milk, took off my apron and left, never to return, except to shop years later. Lamau I didn't expect a chocolate milk cameo. When, an hour after the restaurant closed, and I'd already taken the dishwasher apart and sanitized it for the night, and two waitresses brought back bus trays they forgot about that were full of dirty dishes. I told them to bring me that shit when we close, not as they're walking out the door. 
My manager stomped back to my station and told me to STF you and do my job. I told her to wash the motherfuckers herself, threw my apron in her face and walked out. They called and begged me to come back the next day. I got a raise and became a buffet cook. My married boss rubbing my thigh, asking if I'd ever fuck a married man. Did you report him? That's sexual harassment. I did not, but I wish I would've. I was 18 at the time and I was a receptionist at a hotel that he owned. I was too intimidated by the fact that he owned the whole hotel. Dumb, I know. I worked at a gas station deli and right before I went in for my shift my mom called me to tell me my sister had been rushed to the hospital and that I needed to go there to be with the family. I called my manager and they said to find someone to cover your shift. I called a few people and one person said they would come in and cover my shift. I called manager back and let them know that so and so was covering my shift and they said okay. I came in two days later for my next shift and the manager starts flipping out on me how they were fucked because I didn't show up for my shift. I proceeded to remind them that I had to go to the hospital for my sister and that so and so was covering my shift. She then proceeds to tell me how so and so didn't show up therefore it was my fault and that I cost them money and all this bullshit. I was like are you fucking kidding me? I'm sorry you were too methty out to remember our call but I had a family emergency so fuck you and fuck this place. I walked out the door and proceeded to fuck them one more time. That's one thing that drove me crazy at my first job, you were responsible for making sure the person who was covering your shift showed up, if they no called no showed you both got fired. I'd how normal that is though. It makes sure that you will make sure that the other person will be in. Sounds like someone a shitty boss would do, so pretty normal by standards observed at most first job places.